so firstly, you need to familiarize yourself with the color wheel. Now imprint this image on your brain and maybe save an example of it somewhere to refer back to. It can help you generate color schemes for your designs and when you combine it with the other knowledge in today's video that I'm going to show you, it's really really useful. This color wheel in particular is useful because it shows hues, tints, tones and also shades. The hue is the pure color around the edge of the wheel and then the tint is taking the hue and adding white to it. A tone is the hue plus white and plus black and finally the shade is the hue plus black. Let's move on to the color groups. Like I've said before, monochrome is one of my favorite color groups, but it does have a time and a place. To make a monochrome color, select a hue and then add some black or some white to the hue, i.e. a tint or a tone or a shade, and then generate a color spectrum by using that one hue. The thing about monochrome color schemes is that the eye viewing it brushes over them smoothly and softly because there's no real contrast in color. So it's very relaxing and very appealing to the eye, but this means that your design is not going to pop, so to speak, and so it's not exactly attention grabbing. That should suggest that you shouldn't use this color scheme for designs that warrant urgent attention, so like signs or charts and stuff like that but I find it's very good for digital art and certain logo designs too. Complementary colors are maybe the easiest to understand. You simply select one hue from the color wheel and then locate the direct opposite of that color on the wheel. It doesn't have to be a hue though. You can use a tint, a tone or a shade, but the key is to locate the direct opposite of that color. Unlike monochrome colors, complementary are totally contrasting, which means they can be jarring on the eyes, but they do grab attention. Also, there is something appealing to the eye about them when using designs. However, you need to use them with caution. Try and use like a hue and a tint, and then complement that hue and that tint to have four different colors, instead of just two. This gives the design more depth, and it's not going to be so jarring on the eyes. A famous design that uses this scheme is the Firefox logo, and also notoriously the Drink Fanta uses a complementary color scheme too. Analogous is where you take one color on the base color, and then choose a color either side of it on the color wheel. This is a three color analogous scheme, but if you want to use five, just choose two more either side of the first selection. Much like monochrome colors, analogous do not have much contrast within them. They have slightly more, but they're not exactly complementary, are they? With that in mind, these are again good for digital art, softer designs, and specific logos. I personally wouldn't be using them for a sign that says for sale or wants to grab some attention. This next color scheme requires that you find a color that you wish to use for your design, then move four spaces leaving three gaps in between, and then do that again around the color wheel. You then have three different colors evenly spaced out around the wheel. Triodic colors need to be used very wisely because they're very contrasting, and a design can be overpowering to the eyes when using this scheme. So I again suggest to experiment with tints and maybe tones and shades. They are great for charts and infographics, but make sure that text and information isn't lost due to the high contrast of color. One famous logo that utilizes this color scheme is the Burger King logo, and it's a very attention-seeking design in terms of color. Finally today, we have split complementary, and this is where you choose a color from the color wheel, then move directly opposite but take two colors on either side of that opposite color. This color scheme is quite obscure and it's very difficult to get a good balance in terms of color for your design. It can work however, but it would require experimentation and playing around with tint somewhat. As you can see on this web design page, 
Apart from the cyan and the white, everything is split complementary, and it does actually work pretty well. So next week in the final episode on colour, I'm going to talk about choosing colour for specific designs, so stay tuned for that guys. If you want to keep improving your skills and your awareness as a graphic designer, subscribe to Satori Graphics for weekly graphic design content. Do like and share my content on social media, and of course, have a great day and until next time, design your future today. Peace.